Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Geek Watch, a subsidiary of the monastery, the open bar of the internet. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have my good brother, the man who the man who is taking over all of your anime un under a pair under a pair of um, star shaped sunglasses, the one and only good brother Shades. Yes, I'm the only man brave enough to be here tonight. <laughs> brave bravery or bravery or masochism, you make the call. <laughs> uh, so you mu so um let's it is it is June it is June tw it is June 27th we are at we are at the la we are at the last entry that we'll be do that we'll be doing for the for the month of June um whether or not we whether or not we do one on for on 4th of July night that's going that's going to be up in the air for me cuz is a case of do do I really want to take people away from the fireworks? Yeah, I know I won't be there for that. Yeah. I know some people will say, oh, but maybe. but we're in a but we're in a pandemic. Nobody's gonna, nobody's going to be setting off fireworks. Yes, they will. We saw what. <laughs> Have you looked around? I remind I remind you about what happened last year when the when the when um when the when the when the mayor of I think it was either LA or San Francisco was set, was telling people not to set off fi not to set off fireworks and people did it anyways. Yeah, and that's not counting my fucking state. Mm -hmm. Oh. <laughs> Trust me, fireworks will be launched. Or or mine. Let let's not forget my let's not forget the people where I come from will go across the street the state line to get some fireworks. <laughs> they don't have to do that anymore now because 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 cooler heads have prevailed when it came to when it came to the laws. But growing up, you had to go over to Wisconsin to get some decent fireworks, and then you'd bring them back. I think it was more that the state realized, uh, yeah, this ain't working. They're just they're just gonna do this anyway. We might as well just give it to them. Mm -hmm. um, then again, then again, it, then again, it took it took them it took them until I until I was a teenager. It took that that state until it was a teenager to figure out hey maybe we, maybe we should actually let people get drunk on Sundays <laughs> good lord it's fuck they're going to they're going to do it anyways they're going to stockpile be they're going to stockpile beers on Saturday night just so just so that they have just so that they can drink their way through Vikings games every Sunday 
Are you just trying to delay the inevitable here? Not re not really. I'm just trying to I'm just trying to set the stage. Um <laughs> but this was this was a this was a case of I've want I've obviously I can I can come up with topics all day, all day and night, but I obviously w am open to input from the good from the good brothers of the temple, and this particular little idea came about after we were able to kind of get into a successful groove with the reconstruction themed um, episodes. I think I I think I brought brought this forward to you right after the um, reconstruction of the Star Wars sequels. Yeah. And with that in, with that in mind, I will um I will I will defer to you in order to set the stage into the magical journey we're about to go through. <laughs> yeah, well, wish me luck, ladies and gentlemen, because explaining this nightmare is going to be a pain. <laughs> Before, before you explain so, yeah. the nightmare itself, you might want to explain how we got to this part. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, so, Monk here actually asked me, because we've done con reconstructions on pretty much every other medium. We've done movies. We've done a couple of TV shows. We've even done Toku. But we haven't done an, a reconstruction of an anime yet. And while Mildred certainly ha knows a thing or two about anime... He's not exactly one who has dug into the deep trenches like I've had to do in the last couple of years. So, he asked me to pick an anime that I thought would be good for a reconstruction. I dug through all of the anime that I reviewed over the last couple of years, and there was only one anime that I honestly felt was A, pretty bad, and B, could be fixed. And so with that, I welcome you to the reconstruction of Ingress the Animation. Oh boy, where do I begin? <laughs> <laughs> Allow me to explain how this monstrosity came into existence in the first place. As the title of the animation should clue into you, this is an adaptation based on a somewhat decent mobile game. One that was made by a little company called Niantic. And if you're perking your ears up over that name, that might be because they went on to do a little game, you might have heard of it, called Pokemon Go! <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, the, the Niantic is the company who worked with Nintendo to develop Pokemon Go, and they actually took what they learned from Pokemon Go to, re, to revamp their original game, Ingress. Mm-hmm. Because they also took a lot of what they did with Ingress and kind of tweaked it to work for Pokemon Go. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of back and forth with that. But of course, with the popular with Ingress actually getting a little bit of traction, they decided to in uh, October of 2018 to make an anime on it. Uh <sighs> <laughs> How does one explain a mess? Because as someone who has had to sit through this 11-episode monstrosity, mm -hmm. and yes, there's your clue number one, it's only 11 episodes, it is rushed, it is convoluted, it is boring. <laughs> The basic premise is that research at CERN has discovered a new form of matter known as exotic matter, or XM as they often call it. And they have found portals that have, that's basically acting as fountains spewing out all the shit everywhere, even though you can't see it. And it, how it's supposed to work is that it basically affects the mind, not so much directly, but as a guide to your true potential. And those who are sensitive to it can gain special abilities. And of course, there are groups fighting for control of those portals to use it for their own ends. Some wish to ex explore it and learn about it, research it. And there are others who realize this could be dangerous and want to contain it. Now, that's how the game is involved, but... Honestly, that has nothing to do with the anime. <laughs> the anime barely even touches on that aspect. I mean, they talk about it, but they don't do anything with it. You know, you you barely even see these factions. Mm -hmm. 
how the story of the anime goes is that, of course, when you have this kind of potentially limitless power, greed will arise. As a company known as the Hulong Corporation have discovered a new form of XM called Dark XM. That or chaotic XM is some is it's also referred to that when you when you when you tapped into can can directly affect the mind on a physical level, and they have planning to use it to basically brainwash humanity into being their servants. Mm-hmm. You know, typical take over the world plot. Of course, and three character the three being. <laughs> That joke is outdated, sir. Anyway, our three main characters each have some... Okay, two of our main characters have a direct uh, involvement in everything. The third and the actual main protagonist kind of just gets dragged into this mess. Mm -hmm. (laughs) He's a police detective with a uh, little... uh, With his ability being... uh, Psychometry. Mm-hmm. Basically, he can learn the past of any object he touches with his right hand, but because he can't actually control it, he basically goes Michael Jackson with it. Yep. And right off the bat, you can already tell like all of that could together. There are characters who don't know each other, get mixed up in this madness, and that's just the beginning. It gets more convoluted from there as the story goes on. Like The first third of the series is... Not all that bad. It's pretty basic. You know, just simple run from the bad guys type storyline. Once the main girl, Sarah, gets kit gets captured, that's when everything goes to shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> because, one, they, they basically turned her into a woman in the refrigerator situation because she basically just ends up being uh, restrained for, like, the next two-thirds of the series. Only getting released, like... Actually, she doesn't even get released. She gets trapped in, like, the, the moment she finally gets rescued, she gets trapped in something else. Mm-hmm. You have two, go- two ma- the other two male characters barely get along at first and somehow come together. I haven't for quite figured, I never did quite figure out how that worked. They just, one, one episode, they're just like, oh, wait, we're both working for the same thing? Fuck it, let's go. <laughs> and then they have, then you can't even figure out who the fucking main villain is until the very end because they set up this they, they pull the old bait and switch where they they push on you the fact that the Hulong Corporation is this evil organization, they're the bad guys they're the bad guys, then at the last minute a guy that we saw ex- uh, sacrifice himself in episode one suddenly reemerges, and he's actually the main bad guy because he's got a bit of a god complex mm-hmm so yeah, like this, that like all of this coming together. And there's that's not even scratching the surface of all the bullshit this series. Like another thing is, is like the Hulong Corporation have a a group of bosses known as the Collaborators, and I'm willing to bet some of you are kind of thinking, wait, a secret or a secret uh, group of individuals working behind the scenes to manipulate humanity? Where have I heard that before? Yeah, I called this shit out when I first reviewed it. And what's what makes that even worse is they literally do nothing. You see them for one episode discussing their plans, and then when uh, the main bad guy Christopher Brandt comes back into play, he takes control of all of the uh, devices that are used in the Dark XM. One of which was on the bodyguard of these collaborators, who goes on a rampage and shoots them all dead. They literally did nothing. You could literally remove them from the story entirely, and nothing would have changed. Mm-hmm. And the because what's the biggest problem with a, with a series like Ingress is the fact that you have ele- you have eleven, and I am reminded of something. I'm reminded of something that I that I said when when I did when I did my um, evaluation on Hyperforce. You have a very limited amount of episodes. You have to you have to make every single one of those count. This is especially the case when you only have eleven episodes, less than a less than a half season worth. Um, and 
even even more so when you're when you when you've got a re when you've got a relative un relative unknown because the production w the production was handled by um by Craftar who I don't think I I'm not entirely sure if Craftar is a complete noob when it comes when it comes to it but this was their but this was uh. their first solo work your production period like everything else is either short series like yeah i'm looking on my anime list right now the only other thing i see that's more than just like a scant number of episodes is like really kitty show and they, i don't even have any information on it there's literally no information on this other anime and this was for something like back in 2016. This was like that was like their first thing they ever did. Everything else is literally like one to four episodes tops, mm -hmm. with Ingress being the only major thing they've done. Yeah, and that that was on a that, which which begs me to wonder how they were able to get it on a on a specified programming block on Fuji TV when it aired in Japan. It was on the Plus Ultra um, programming block. I I can tell you why, because. They weren't the ones that were probably pushing that. You th you think that you think that it was mainly Netflix who got who did that? Netflix and Niantic probably pushed that because here because yeah, like th 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 this came out in uh, October 2018, right around the time this was already after Pokemon Go had become a big hit. Mm -hmm. So Niantic was like literally the talk of the town, and the reason why they made this anime is because just a month later. It in November, Niantic released their a uh, thoroughly revamped version of the game, Ingress Prime. Mm -hmm. So they needed that hype. There was also the Which, there was also the um, a, I believe there was also that a that AR event that they were doing around the same around the same time. Yeah, I think they were doing an AR event tied to the anime, kind to kind of uh, tie it all together. I, I take I take I take it slightly back. The a, the um. The campaign, the campaign I was thinking of was Sphere of Weirdness. That was in 2012, so that predates it by. Yeah, but no, yeah, I, I'm, I'm almost certain. I believe they did really have an event in uh, around the time that the anime was coming out to kind of promote it. Mm -hmm. You know, to really, I think they had something involving Dark XM going on in the in the game at that point because, well, they introduced the anime. You got to put it in the game now. Uh, about that, my research had indicated that. Chaotic or Dark XM is the game's in-game currency. Oh, God damn it! So they just kind of, kind of did something with it. Well, whatever. It's yeah. That makes that, that, that you know what? Fuck it. That just raises further questions. <laughs> um, but it's kind of fun, it's kind of funny you use that use that exact gag in your review as well. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, literally, because yeah, the end, the ending of the whole thing. Oh yeah. So uh, allow me to explain this. I mean, obviously, we're already discussing spoilers here. Mm -hmm. So near the end of the series, they come across this AI system. Um, Ada. Ada. Thank you. I was trying to remember the name. Yeah, they come across this AI system named Ada, who had been guiding Mako the main character Makoto throughout the series to begin with, but he just they never knew who. It trying to hunt it down mm -hmm. and the way that ada worked was it was so advanced that no normal computer system could handle it so what what brant had done was literally took a girl who was in a coma and used her brain as the cpu i'm gonna give you a minute to process what the hell i just said now where the get where the futurama get comes into play is at the very last scene like the after credit scene of the final episode the ada basically now completed its task releases the girl and allows her to wake up and she looks exactly like sarah which which was the most blatant um sequel be sequel beg that i've seen and i really don't like it when works do a sequel beg now 
it could well, be... I wouldn't even say this was a sequel bag. I just literally think they just threw that in there just to mess with people because it doesn't really le it doesn't honestly make sense. It doesn't lead it, it, it like there's no way you can gleam a sequel out of that. The whole the whole it's... putting something in just to just to spark conversation. Yeah, exactly. Because if that if that is Sarah, then who have we been following this whole show? That's the, kind of the implication they're throwing out there. I like I like to I like to nickname this kind of thing pulling a Shyamalan. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Um, the um, and because of because of that because of that the big the biggest pro the biggest problem when it comes to tackling a pr a project a project like like like, tr like this is you have several seasons worth of story. All trying, to, all trying to be packed into eleven episodes. I mean, there's, there's obviously the framework because it is still a very character-focused thing, and I, and I applaud the, I will give them credit for the fact that they kept the cast relatively small. The major, the majority of the cat, the majority of the characters that are, get, that are going to play a factor, there's only six of them. Yeah. But at but at the same at the same time, we have a story that goes fr that goes from t that goes from Tokyo to uh, to some to some place in the Middle East to uh, to the to a uh, to Swi to Switzerland and um, and America all in eleven episodes. Yeah, and. The idea, the idea of ho the idea of hopping about and di hopping about and do and doing adventures is is not something I'm opposed to. I mean, I mean, you, I mean, you saw that you saw that kind of thing a lot in your Euro in um, European comics for decades. But again, it comes it comes back to the fact that you only have eleven episodes. Oh, and let's not forget there, Monk. On top of all of this other stuff, they try to squeeze in a freaking cameo from an actual celebrity. <laughs> yeah. I I had he I had heard that people lost their sh lost their shit on your watch party reg regarding that. I um I didn't lose my shit. I just tilted my head like okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because the problem with it is like all right, for for context, when who long is getting ready to release the the sunglasses that will that contain the dark accent. Um right out of the fucking blue they have a commercial for these sunglasses featuring actual VTuber Kizuna Ai. On one on one hand, it, on one hand, this um get getting a VTuber to advertise certainly makes sense. We talked about that on the VTuber episode. On the other hand, it just 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 feels real. Just felt really weird. Yeah, and bear in mind, this was like this was I think. Right after a lot of the issues with uh, with Kizuna I happened, so this was already when she was past her pe peak, and this was just as I think Hollow Live was starting to even begin. This was in the early years of Ho like the earliest year of Hollow Live, so mm -hmm. VTubing wasn't exactly the massive thing it was, but Kizuna I had been a massive success, so it made sense why they brought her in. But ugh, also. I, as much as I love who they got to voice her in the dub, the fact that they had to give her a dub voice kind of kind of pisses me off. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love Christina V, but the, no, you can't do that. That that it just it 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 does it doesn't work. <laughs> you, you should have just subtitled that scene and left it in Japanese. Mm -hmm. I guarantee you, anyone who's watching this show. Knows who the fuck he's an eye is because this was not a mainstream hit by any stretch. Yeah, but with <laughs> with all that with all that said, I I asked you for a challenge, and as as I mentioned in the as I mentioned in the council before we went live, I got I think I got what I paid for. <laughs> I mean, gr granted, I gr granted, I'm not granted. I wasn't paying you for any of this, but <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> You, you, careful what you wish for, because you just might get it. Is I think is the better term you want to go with. But, but with but with all of that said, this is certainly going to be a challenge. So let us have a go. I almost kind of wish I, I kind of wish I could have been the one to say it this time because this is. <laughs> so yeah, indeed.
Let us have a go. <sighs> I don't... Oh, oh, de oh dear, merciful Budo. <laughs> now, one of the first issues we have to address is the fact that this is a mobile game tie-in anime. Mm -hmm. That is the big elephant in the room that you gotta have to deal with, because... No matter how much we want to to uh, get around it or or not involve it, if so, if this anime is being made, the mobile game has to be promoted. It has to be a major factor in whatever reconstruction we make. So, because otherwise, the anime doesn't exist. You know. So we <laughs> given given that originally originally I originally I would. The the approach the approach that I'm that I'm considering going with is not to get rid of it, but to sh but um but to shut but to shuffle um aspects of it. Because I ended up I ended up looking I at at the um at the way the actual game works on the and granted I was, and granted I was using the wiki and a handful of um of tutorial videos to help me out on this. Mm hmm. And because of, because of how it works, I do think that there is a a bit of a a bit of a form a bit of a format to to kind of work with. Um, since you have since um you ha you of course you of course have the whole thing with the with portals, but attack but you have portal hacking with which is which is attacking a portal to try and turn to try and turn it onto a faction's side. You have portal mods that can be used for offense and defense of that of that portal, and and you have um you have you have the glyphs which did get some did get some use later on but not as not as much as we would have liked, and the idea of of um of glyph hacking which can which has um hit which can have hidden items in areas. There's also the fact that that um, portals are very consistent in terms of in terms of where they are they tend to be in places of human achievement aka popular you know because this is an AR in, in the an IRG game they are actual like ma uh, major lot, uh, landmarks across the world mm -hmm. um at one point in time they did they did have and they did this also with Pokemon Go but they ha but they um they put. They had a submit. They had a submission initiative, where people could submit potential um, areas that could be used as portals. Um, something similar was done with Pokemon Go for the Poke Gyms. Or not Poke Gyms. Poke yeah. Stops. Yeah, the Poke Stops. And actually, they did take a lot of the data from Ingress's uh, submissions and use that in their development of Pokemon Go, giving them kind of a head, uh, giving them an early start on that regard. Yeah. But. Yeah, and and that that part is actually is pretty interesting. Like, I, like this is not like even though I'm not a man of mobile games, I may have made this very clear in my original review as well as other other places that I don't like mobile games at all. Any of them, I don't care what they are, because especially in the modern era, ninety nine point nine nine money drainers. Mm -hmm. They are designed for nothing else than to take your money and a lot of it. Mm -hmm. And they're about they're about as reliable on that matter as discount Dan's discount Dan's rent rent a new program. <laughs> and if anyone watching this video wants to debate me on that aspect, bring it the fuck on. Hell, we could probably make that a geek watch in and of itself with how bad that is. Um, if if you do that, make sh make sure that your health insurance is properly um upkept. <laughs> yeah especially if Absolutely. i'm around because i'm gonna have some words <laughs> yeah i think we all will have some words mm -hmm. but yeah that that is not something you can change my mind on because i've seen it every freaking time i have not found a single game that it, unless it's a game that you even games that you have to pay for have these mechanics mm -hmm. this is where the whole microtransaction bullshit started people yeah and it's all, and if if there's all that's also why so, why so many companies are tr are trying desperately to redefine what counts as pay to win, and it's n and it's not sticking. Um, because we're not stupid. Mm -hmm. Now, 
take now um one of the one of the big problems that I do because one of the actually I'm I'm gonna hold off on that. I want to focus on the get on the game part before we get into any of the before we get into any character reconstruction. Um, the I'd I'd say that I'd say that give, given th given that kind of setup, there's two, there's two ways we can go about it. We can do the whole oh oh it was a um it was a t it was a technology it was a technology used elsewhere, but it was but it but it got leaked and made into a game. Or we or we can be or we can do the idea of p of it being known as a game and that and somebody stumbles onto some onto something where it becomes far more real. The latter is a more well-worn trope, admittedly. Actually, I'd like to opt for a third option. Let's remove the idea that it's a game at all in terms of the anime story. Let's instead say that what we are actually witnessing is a, a, a secretive battle between these two factions. Make that, let's, let, let's make that the main, one of the main parts of the plot. You know, let's have t our two two of our main characters be on opposite factions, and then Hulong's involvement causes them to set aside their differences and work together. Again, um, it's a basic cliche, but it works. I'm perfectly fine with going that, especially since we already ha we already have a bit of a framework with those with those gla with those um with those glasses that um Jack had. Yeah. The That allow him to see the XM, uh, because aside from Sarah, only only those who have those specs can see them. Mm -hmm. And I think I think the easiest thing to do is have like if we're gonna use our main characters, Jack's gonna be on the, will be on once uh, the I have to remember the different factions. Resistance. They'll, they'll be on the enlightened side. Now uh, you, I would have thought Makoto would be better for uh, resistance because he's a cop. He's he's an investigator. So you're you're planning on ha you're planning on having the two sides on this reversed. Yeah, well, the reason I the, the reason why is because of why Jack how Jack gets involved. I think Jack will be a former resistance, but after working with Brant, became a would become an enlightened, because that's kind of how his character is developed throughout the series. Um, but speaking of that, one thing that I think we need to need to address before we get into Brant is it is um, Makoto. Now he is, I I don't think he's a I don't. If you were to look at the books, he's not a cop per se. He's he'd probably be listed as a consultant. Yeah, in the that's, same that way, is true. In the same way, Sherlock Holmes was technically a consultant for Scotland Yard, but he didn't work. He he would certainly get paid for them for the, for consulting duties, but he wasn't getting paid as a as a officer or a detective. Yeah. Um. The big problem with a with a character like him is. One, one. There's the fact that um, a good that the arc that they want him to be on is something that he's already kind of finished. But yeah. the bigger, but the bigger problem is he is a, is that he is a passive protagonist. He doesn't he doesn't exercise a whole he ex, he only exercises initiative very late into the story. But when it come but when it comes to the er, when it comes to the early part, the first third of it. He is reacting to uh, to other people. Yeah, absolutely. So that that's another reason why I think we should have Makoto on the resistance mm -hmm. side. The way we can go about it is that he is he is aware of the portals. He's aware of everything already, but he's seen all the damage this has caused, and he just wants it to stop. I'd imagine I'd imagine that um, his childhood, given the fact that. He didn't. That he wasn't able to fully control his power, and he ended up getting his fair amount of abuse from just people and just people he grew up with, and his own family did not help matters. Exactly. Given given that, yeah, having him having him be it, it cer it will certainly make more sense than in the source material where he was just told to pick a side, and he ended up picking enli enlightened in the in the heat of the moment. <laughs> yeah. Um. And. I get the feeling that the only reason Enlightened was pi was picked simply was simply to make a um, name pun, because his name is Makoto M Midorikawa. Yeah, yeah, that's probably what it is, and that's that's the sad part about it. Like again, 
You know, and we could have him switch sides later on. You know, maybe he learned something throughout the journey. He's like, you know what? Maybe there is something to this. Maybe I've been denying what's going on here for too long. Mm -hmm. You know, you can have that and make that part of his development. Yeah. Or have have him and Jack be kind of kind of reach a middle ground where they're not fully enlightened, but they're not fully resistant either. Mm -hmm. Um, one of one other thing that I I do think. I do think needs to be be addressed is having but having Midoriya Kawa be able to to some degree um, stand up for himself because for the longest time whenever 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 things would get physical he was completely outclassed. Yeah, and I mean obviously going up against Jack with his ability, yeah, he's going to have a disadvantage, so that makes sense. But there were a lot of times where he should have at least been able to hold his own, and he because. Now be a cop, but he works with them. Mm -hmm. You don't work with cops unless you're prepared for prepared for anything. And I'd I'd imagine that he has he has at least some, he has at least some measure up in our in this version of it. He does have some measure of self defense training. Now yeah. going, he's not he's not going to be able to go up against somebody like Jack and 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 win unless unless he fights really dirty. But Jack but Jack is but Jack has been a mercenary for. God for God knows how many years. Right. Um, we don't want we don't want uh, Makoto to be overpowered. We just want him to be able to hold his own in most fights. Yeah. Now, give now given th given that the the whole um the whole the whole scene w involving uh, involving si involving Sarah and the and the Hulong and seeing and seeing Brant um. Um, get blown up. I think we need to keep that because that's re yeah. that's really the patient. That's really the patient zero effect that gets that gets the ball rolling. Since and I'd say I'd I'd say in that kind of thing, um, obviously obviously a obviously an explosion in Hulao is going to get is going to get the attention of the local police, and. That's wh and that's where that's where that's where Makoto would be br would be brought in to to see if he can get any clues that the other that the other um, cops can't. Um. And then and um, you could you would pro it would probably be easy to have it have it in this that um, that Jack is n is wa is watching from a distance. But yeah. A lot, a lot of those aspects we can keep pretty much with only tweaking the why or the how, but still keeping the end result where, yeah, Jack's watching them from a distance. Makoto use, learns that there might still be someone inside, finds Sarah, get, helps her get out, and then they have Jack chase him down. But instead of it just being they don't know why Jack's chasing them, he actually reveals that he's a resist, he's, he's an enlightened one, and he wants... He wants to do. Uh, I want to say he wants Sarah for his own purpose, for their own purposes. I'd, I'd because... also, I'd, um, I'd also, I'd also probably put in, probably put in one scene that he looked at, um, he looked at Brant's notes and and saw that that Sarah was some was somewhat was somewhat important and see, seeing that um seeing that Makoto, someone who's resistance aligned. Um, was was ca was carrying was carrying her out of wh where she was. He ends up jumping to conclusions. Exactly, that you know, because that aspect I think we can keep. It's just now we're adding context to it, which is often from what I've when, uh, with how often we've done these in reconstructions. That often seems to be the biggest problem is that there's a lack of context mm -hmm. in a lot of scenes. Just adding context to certain things often fixes ninety percent of the problems we have. Yeah. <laughs> um, I would I would say that I would say that as that goes as that goes on, we do have a we do have a bit of a scuffle where Makoto is trying his trying his best to hold his own, but it's kind of hard it's kind of hard to do that when one you've got somebody who has years more experience than you, and two can read can read every move you're about to do before you do it. Yeah. Um. And I'd would say I'd say that um, the the way that, the way that we'd escalate this kind of situation is that's is that's when um, that 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 is that is 
that's when um a that's when agents from who from Hulong show show up. Because obviously obviously they're gonna wanna have wanna have an interest in either in either making sure making sure that um Sarah is is either dealt with or this or the whole or the whole thing with the explosion is ke is kept as under wraps as possible. Yeah. Because I, I, if there is any aspect of this story we're gonna nuke, it's the whole keeping her restra keeping her captured for ninety percent of the show. Mm -hmm. That I'm dropping a nuke on. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't want to say that we were gonna be breaking out the nukes because every time I say that, I end up jinxing it. <laughs> not this time. No, I'm more than happy to drop a nuke on that aspect of the story because I do not want women in refrigerators. Thank you very much. Um. Now that be that being that being said. When it comes to when it comes when it comes to Jack's character, there's not a whole lot that we, aside f aside from the alliance change, there's not a whole lot that we really need to change. I'd when it and to a certain degree, I'd I'd say I'd say it I'd say that also applies with um with Sarah. In ter uh, just in terms of personality, not in terms of character arc, obviously. Um, yeah. Because. Up until that point, I think I think she j just saw herself as just a, as just a intern for who, for who long. Working well, that's also because she was amnesiac, I believe, or at least after the explosion, she was. Yeah. So you have you have you have two you have two ang you have two angles that are converging on each other. One one of them is is her is her amne is her amnesia. The other the other one. Is and this is this is one th this is one thing that I that is going to be a significant change. Instead of instead of say um, instead of say Ada being be pushing things along, I instead I am instead going I instead want to go with the idea that after the ex that after the explosion, um, Christopher Brandt left clues in the for in the form of in the form of items that are supposed that are meant to be glyph hacked. Yeah. Also, another big change that I think we should have is, and this this is how we drop the nuke on the original captured storyline, is that it's not actually Hulong that's after her for their own ends. As far as they they made, uh, as far as they're, I'm concerned, they don't even know she has any gift at all. Mm -hmm. This needs to be Brant's doing, and that's why he's leaving them clues. He's guiding them to what he feels is her destiny. Yeah. Um. Now, gi given the, given that I do I do think that keeping um keeping Liu Tian Tianhua um is some is something that we should do since he does make for a fine um antagonist in a more physical sense. Oh yeah. Espe especially since he especially since he is also a sensitive. It's just that his gift is being able to read thoughts. Which is an, is a nice way of being able to can't being able to cancel out a lot of advantages that other people can have. Yeah, though I would I would offer that because of Hulong's own goals, he's not aligned to either faction. No, he's. Are you saying are you saying that he's? It's more that he's out, he's more out for his own. I, well, I would say that would have applied to all of Hulong. Anyone who is sensitive in Hulong would be would be on neither faction by design. Mm -hmm. So that, I would keep that. I would make that the big change there. That way, because if you aligned Hulongs, especially you, with either faction, you c can run into problems with that. Yeah, you end you end up making one f one side of them be the evil approach. I'd say, I'd say that something that something that I think would be a lot more interesting. Is if they had is if they had tech to um to in to shift between the two. Yeah, that might make more sense. Yeah, I think that would be a better idea. That way, they could always manipulate things to their favor, even if it's going against the faction they usually work with. Mm -hmm. You know, if, you know, yeah, sure. It's, you might see them one minute helping out the resistance side, but then one of their agents is on the other side but also manipulating things to keep the conflict going because more conflict for them means more money in that regard i'd, I'd say that they probably have they they're probably not too far removed from um comstar and battletech you know trying trying to maintain trying to maintain a balance of power to make sure that no side has 
too much of an advantage. Except that instead of doing instead of doing it for that kind of reason, they're doing it because they want to be the ones in power. They're mm -hmm. the ones in control. Yeah. And I get now when it comes now that brings us to the discovery of um, chaotic or dark XM. Um, in the game, in like I mentioned before, in the games, it was it was a it was a in-game currency to uh, to get certain items. Obvious, but obvious, obviously, um, we have to we have to take a different approach. I think, I think when it comes to when it comes to when it comes to that to um to dark XM, I'm okay. I'd I get the feeling that's that's the key to how they're able to shift factions so easily. Yeah, I can see that. Oh. I, I could go with that. And I'd pr I'd um. Because when when it comes to going into into an abandoned lab with this kind of tech, that's the perfect opportunity to go into to go into a bit of um a bit of the haunted house vibe. And one means yeah. that I'd pro that I'd probably do it is that one of their experiments, um, they were able to make a kind of a kind of chaotic XM sensitive. Yeah, that, make, that action actually works with. Yeah, that definitely works because mm -hmm. then that allows them to, you know, and then we can actually keep the plot of them using like the dark XM glasses, but instead of it just having to need Sarah to make it work, thus the need for her to be contained. No, they just no, they can just use the technology in and of itself. They know how to use the glyphs. They can yeah. do it themselves. It's just they just need to get enough dark XM to do it. Mm -hmm. And the. I'd I'd say that I'd say that when it when it comes to Sarah's abilities, I'm think I'm think there's already the fact that she can see she can see the substrate without without needing equipment. I'd go I'd go one I'd go one step I'd go one step further and um have her have her take have her take a cue from our from our fit from our favorite our favorite librarian with bad social skills. <laughs> that she that um she ha that um she has access to an equivalent to an equivalent to the akashic records the trick the tricky thing is is that th is that those records aren't in aren't in um aren't in any earth language um it's in glyphs which is one, which is one of those th the reason why i'm focusing on the glyphs is that there's a lot you can do with that 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 um they attempt to do by having all, by having all of the episode titles be a, be a three glyph combination, but yeah. I th I think by I think by having it as such, have, having having glyphs be the be the key, that's the somebody who's able to who's able to properly decipher these. And since we're dealing with a cipher, there's layers upon layers of it. Um, that could, you could it could easily be utilized to see. Where um where dark XM is actually being get, actually being gathered and then get and then get a hold of it. That's the reason why think, they would want why they would want Sarah. Yeah, and also have it be that dark XM could be able to amplify the sensitive abilities of 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 either faction. Kind of tying it back into the fact that Dark XM was used to buy enhancement items in the game. Mm -hmm. um, now, uh, now, one th one thing that I've one thing that I've kind of I've kind of been dodging, and I'm not sh I'm not sure how we'd even integrate this is is the is things like things like um por things like um portal mods and and anti portal weapons. I'm still I'm still not in. It was kind of used during that whole firing se during that whole firing sequence on w on one portal early on in the show, but not a but not a whole lot else. I'm trying hmm. to f I'm trying to figure because again the key the key thing is that um, when a faction has ac when a faction gets a hold of a portal they can af they can affix portal mods up to four of them onto that portal to e to either g either give it shields or turrets essentially. Actually, light bulb just went off. Okay, what do you got? The original XM specs. 
not the dark ones, but the original ones that like what mm. Jack has. Mm-hmm. What if that wasn't as uncommon as the, as it was in the original anime? What if anyone who was participating in this in this little uh, battle all had their own pair, and they also acted as like a digital representation of what they're doing? Like everything's on the phones or on their whatever device they end up using for this, mm-hmm. but it would be represented in a digital form through the sha- through the sunglasses. I'm per- I'm perfect I'm perfectly okay with that. Um, since th- since through that you can ca- you can kind of replicate you can kind of replicate a simplified version of a portal battle. Yeah, which is what which is again another great way to tie it back into the game. Again, the, the this is something that they failed to do. They briefly mention it, and it does play a small factor in the ending of the original anime. Mm-hmm. But in our recreate in our new in our version, it's going to be a big factor because. This war is going to play a big part in why everything's starting to come down the way it is. Yeah, that's that's one thing that I, I needed to I need to get I need to get clear out of the out of the system before I before I went further. But um, as far now, one thing that one thing that I th- I think needs to be made at needs to be made absolutely clear is um for one, um the whole the whole Brant was a, Brant was a simulacrum the whole time. I'm not doing that. <laughs> Um, as far as far as it, as far as anyone's concerned, Brant is dead, and we are and we are looking at the we are looking at the notes because he clearly pl- he clearly planned ahead with this thing. If that's the case, then I think what really should be like the real end game should involve Ada. Mm-hmm. Ada should be the final the final hurdle for our heroes. I'm think I'm thinking in I'm thinking in that that um Ada, Ada probably believes that she is in that she is enacting Brant's last will but she but in reality she's misinterpreting it. Actually, yeah, and I think what we can also do is once we get to a point where Sarah does have to fully enter the substrate kind of like in the final battle of the original mm-hmm. representation of Brant using that misinformed idea and that ends up being the final battle is them trying to stop the digi- this digital recreation of Brant and shutting down Ada or the very least convincing her that she she looked at the situation wrong mm-hmm. um, and when now when it beca- because of that we're, we're obviously we're obviously not going to have um we might there might be a f- we might be able to do a few moments where it, where Ada is ma- making making some sort of remarks um in regard to the pr- in regard to the progress of the heroes but th- but nothing be- but nothing beyond that um one thing that one thing that I do want I do want to keep is that is that Midora Kawa has hacker friends yes is I mean, um, it, this, it would make even more sense here because there he's on the resistance side, so he would have people to help with that kind of thing. Yeah, and because and because of, because of that, and and just and just the fact that if that um, if you're going to be in a job involving dealing with a whole lot of people, you're get, you're going to be making connections one way or another. Yeah. Um, and the the. The I know a guy is a is a well worn is a well worn trope. Um. I'd say I'd say that I'd say that bec- that because because of that that's how we, that's how we have the means of him um ju- of the, of them jump of them jumping all over the place. It's just that now th- now there's a bit a bit more a bit more um legit reason instead instead of an ass pull. Yeah. Though I will, I will say that the, the involvement of Makoto's allies in the final battle in the original actually worked because they had established it early on enough that when they pulled that out, it was like, oh yeah, oh that would make sense. Mm-hmm. But we're just gonna make it a little bit better. <laughs> yeah. Now, when it now um since we're not we're not doing the whole thing of 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 Sarah getting ca- of Sarah getting captured, um. That do, that does mean that that does mean that she that she'd have a lot more time interacting with interacting with the other two, and we through that I could kind of see a bit 
I could kind of see a bit of a id ego super ego thing, um, which I I know is something that I highlight a lot. I highlight a lot, but it's a well worn motif in storytelling. Um, as M Makoto um, has has had as up until this up until the story starts has had a very negative attitude towards towards XM and its uses. Jack believing in Brant's believing in Brant's vision has a, has a very um, optimistic view of the view of the matter. And Sarah is the person in the middle in this kind of situation. Yeah, she's the voice of reason between the two. Mhm. Mm and yes, in this kind of thing, I I am per, I am most definitely planning on having Makoto and Jack butt heads often. Cuz they would like e even in the original, they, like they didn't get along for a while because they didn't think the same. So yeah, let's let's up that up a little bit. You know, they're on. They are. They have diff. They're on. They have different ideals. They're gonna. They're not gonna get along all that great throughout the gate. Mm -hmm. Um. But one one um. One partic one particular at. One particular avenue that they ca that they kind of started leaning into with with Makoto, that I think that I think it, I think is worth I think is worth noting is him. There's several moments where he where it's implied that he's using his psych his psychometry to copy other pe copy other people's skills or or um r or rapidly learn a skill that he normally doesn't have. That that's kind of a common thing with psychometry. I was actually we were actually just watching an anime th earlier this week on the watch party that had a similar thing happen where a character uh, ha has psychometry as their power, and that's exactly how it was utilized. Like they they had a pair of uh, nunchucks that were used by Bruce Lee, and when they held it, they would suddenly know how to swing them like they were Bruce Lee. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um. So and I think I think that's I think that's something that sh that should be kept. But I wouldn't have it as a, I would have it as a as just a natural um, part of part of his abilities. Yeah. Uh, it's ju it's just it's just that because of, because of the whole glove attitude where he where he only seems to use it in very specific circumstances. He does he's never had a chance to develop to develop it further. But since he's been in these kind of situations where just his normal psychometry isn't going to cut it anymore. He he has he has to he has to dip into further into that further into that power. Adapt or die. Mm -hmm. Um. When it com when it comes now when it comes to li one thing that I do intend on keeping is that Liu Tenhua, I do think he should be a pursuer throughout throughout a lot of this. Mm. That he that no no matter no matter where they go he's always chasing them. Yeah. Espe especially, si but I I would um, but I would put I would put a bit of a catch when it comes to when it comes to his abilities. Um, because as far as he's concerned, he considers himself the he considers himself um the at the pinnacle obviously. That. I'm keep I'm keeping that particular complex with him, which is why you don't need two, you don't need two people in a story with a god complex. <laughs> um, but the approach that I'm cons the approach that I'm considering with him is that th is that there is that um whenever he's using his mind reading abilities, um he has to, he has to he has to main he has to maintain a certain degree of focus because it's it's more like he's opening a floodgate and if he if um if he's if it's if it's too op if it's too open then he then he gets completely overwhelmed and he shuts down simply because of all the noise yeah that makes sense um yeah, that's always been an issue with mind reading abilities that I've always like had it take an issue with is that you know they make it sound like it's so easy for them to do it but in reality trying to sift through a person's mind that's like that's that's walking into a, t in a like i compare it to something in how not to summon a demon lord when they went inside like the magic of certain uh magical items where it was this giant yarn ball of just absolute chaos mm -hmm. like that's what you would see if you were going into someone's mind yeah 
And because of that, I'd, I'd, imag- I'd imagine that for him to read one person's mind, ex- one person's um, surface thoughts exclusively, takes it. It requires him to focus solely on that person, which it, which is which is one of those one of those cases of if he's that focused on one person, he's not going he's not going to be focused on what other people are doing, which can be used against him. the The point yeah. is is that something like mind reading. At first glance, can seem can seem like, oh my God, this is way too powerful. How can we possibly do anything against it? But under but understand but after several encounters, um, there there's a there's a clear line where where it's drawn that this isn't as omnipotent as he may cl- as he may claim it is. It has weaknesses, and I think I think those would make for far more interesting encounters than a glorified Mexican standoff. Yeah, that was ugh. Um. But with that, with that kind of thing in mind, would you would you keep the simulacrum thing when it comes to Jack? Honestly, if if we're not doing, Hello, I'm still. Hello? Here. I'm here now. Have you heard? <laughs> All right. <laughs> nope. Okay. I'm assuming you didn't hear a thing I just said. Yeah, Discord decided to fuck with me. Well, as long as we're still going, that's good. Mm-hmm. But yeah, what I was saying was, uh, no, I don't think we should keep the simulacrum thing for Jack because if we do that, then we have to ask, well, if Jack's got this simulacrum thing, why doesn't Brant? So we we'd be right back where we started if we did that. Mm-hmm. Um, there's, 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 there's also the, also the fact that, um, the, when you, when you inter when you introduce, um, so when you introduce the idea, the idea that you can cheat death like that, unless you, unless you put in certain caveats, it does on some level cheapen it. Simply because if it's so, if it's so easy for someone to make a simulacrum like that, um, What's st- what's stopping them from making a whole from making a whole new Jack or a whole or a whole new Brant? Yeah, and the limit they it just so happens to be about the time they're making the rescue. That was so fucking stupid. Yeah. So instead, instead, I instead I do th- I do think that we'll be keep we'll be keeping the we'll be keeping the idea of J- of Jack st- Jack staying around. T- if we need, if we need to have, if we need to have Jack go go out in the final act, um, have it have it that he's go, that he's go that he's going out sw- he's going out swinging the old fashioned way. Yeah, that would make the most sense as well. And uh, and and this and the, to do this though, we also have to change uh, the circumstances of why he joined Brant in the first place. Because him being a mercenary, he obviously wouldn't care about this thing mm-hmm. until Brant came into the picture. So. I think we should keep the car bomb because yeah. that's how like that ha- that's where how Jack dies originally before the simulacrum is involved. But I think in this case he does actually just barely survive the car bomb and gets you know has Brant. We'll, we'll say that Brant had a healing ability or something like that. He could mm-hmm. he could accelerate a healing process in the body. Yeah. Um. If we need if we need to put a if we need to put a catch on that kind of thing, um, I'd pr- I'd probably have it that. That um, excel that accelerated he- accelerating healing, um, takes a toll on his own body. Yeah, and maybe he had already reached a point where he was gonna die anyway. That's why he off de- off decided to blow himself up because mm-hmm. he was already gonna die pretty soon as it was. Yeah. Um. And because because uh, be- I'd imagine that because of that, that's how um, that kind that kind of situation would be ha- would make sense for why. Jack has um 
has precognitive abilities. Yeah, we would use that to explain why Jack has become an enlightened one, because... XM and what he could do with it. And while Jack at first was like, okay, whatever, dude, I'm just doing my damn job. But then that moment happens, and he sees... He wakes up to see Brain healing him. He's like, holy shit, this stuff can do some awesome things. Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe I can buy into this bullshit after all. Yeah. Because... The way he the way he talk the way he talks about Brant seems to indicate that he had a that he held a high amount of respect for him, and I do th I do think that should be kept. Yeah. Now, obviously, obviously, one of the things that we're that we're nuking from Orbit is is the whole collaborators thing because they didn't do anything with it, so why should we? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we nuked the shit out of them. They are gone. Fuck that noise. Yeah. I would ha I I would I would say that for a, for a good amount of, for a good amount of the story that we've set up, it is the, it is the three of the three of them fo trying to f um following the clues that Brant left behind. Um and it's and make and get and being per and being pursued by Lou. The, the whole time, or Lou, tr Lou trying to figure out the figure out where they're going to be heading next. Yeah, and I think one thing we have to do, especially towards the end, is they have to have a scene where they get a final message from Brant, explaining his vision, explaining mm -hmm. what his last will actually was, so that when they go up against Ada, they know the truth and they see that Ada's got it all wrong. Now. Given th given that that brings us to one of the, one of the one of the final major pieces of the puzzle, and that is how we um, how we introduce Ada. Hmm. That is the tricky part because yeah, in in the original Ada just kind of just says okay, you know, but it was already a part of the story, mm -hmm. guiding along, and, that, and then she's like, okay, I think I'm ready to reveal myself now. <laughs> But here we don't have that issue. We we don't have that ability. Though we could say I say that final message, that's when he talks that's when Brant reveals Ada to them and gives them her location because as far as he knew, Ada would be able to take him take them to the last step, not knowing that shit's about to go horribly wrong. I was I was thinking I was thinking either that or um, given how, now the excuse for a, the excuse for Ada being very in the shadows is that is that there is a um, a va a vaccine that that would tr that would track that would track her no matter where she if she showed up in a place for too long. Um. The there's a there's a couple of approaches that I'm, I can think of instead. One is. Is Ada is Ada being Ada being utilized by the by the Hulong Cor Corporation? The other the other is is um is her is her be is her being in the shadows, but but having to constantly be on the run from Hulong's um virus. That would makes you know what actually once again I offer a third option because remember Brant was on the enlightened side. Mm -hmm. We kind of have to keep that idea in mind with Ada, that she would also be on the enlightened side, and maybe that's why she also, because she was programmed to follow three, uh, follow a logic based on Brant's ideals, that's how she got things so mixed up. Yeah, that's it. Is it is a it is a classic instance of AI gone wrong? But something I want to make clear with this is that Ada is not evil. No. Misunderstood, yes, but not evil. Her her reason she's not, it's a case it's a classic case of some of a, a of a AI operating uh, operating on faulty information and thus coming to faulty conclusions. Yeah. And and well and you can have a scene where our heroes discuss the possibility of having to shut her down, 
but they know there's something that, that like, Ada's involvement would actually help save the world or at least bring some peace to all of this. Mm -hmm. So they want to keep her alive. They just have to face the possibility of shutting her down, even though we know at the end it's not going to happen. They will mm -hmm. find a way to, to solve the, to fix this. Yeah. Now, when, now um, with, that kind of, with that kind of thing in mind, I do... Now the the idea the idea of the idea of um of the chaotic XM go, um causing people to go berserk I I do I do want to keep that but I want to have it focused solely on on Hulao on Hulao's agents Inse instead of the instead of this worldwide th instead of this worldwide set of coincidences it's more of yeah. the, they thought they thought that they thought that Chaotic XM would be their ace in the hole, and it ends up backfiring on them. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah. Now, when it comes to when it comes when it comes to the when it comes to the final con confrontation, that's where we have the whole have the whole thing with the substrate. Especially since I could, given how easy it is for Ada to get to get around in systems, I'd imagine that she has as much access to the substrate. Makes sense, and yeah, and because we're kind of doing the substrate a little bit differently now, that would also make a lot more sense to work with that. Mm -hmm. And I now I now I will admit that when it comes to deciphering um, the d the data within it, like I said, I'm go I'm going with the idea that it's co that it's codes upon codes. If you if you want an example of how of how deep the how deep this kind of encryption goes. Consider, consider the, consider um the journal of Sc of Scar's brother in um Full Metal Alchemist. Mm. How just how just reading the pages alone wasn't enough. You had to take all of them out and arrange and arrange them in a certain order in order to get the full message of what he was trying to do. Yeah, that makes sense. Though I would also say that because Ada is an AI, she was easily able to crack those codes, but. The information she got from that, again, that, oh, that's what causes the misinterpretation. She misreads the new, the, maybe she got one of them wrong, or maybe she rearranged something wrong and got the wrong information from it, and that's why she's going haywire. I'd, I'd say it's more of she, ha she, it's more of she had all, she had all of the, all of the, da all of the data, but the, th but the thing is, is that the, the way, the way that data is, inter is interpreted isn't something that can be just that can be just done in a binary sense. That makes sense. Espe especially when especially when you when you consider that the uh, that a, a key thing with X with XM and the and the whole story is um consciousness and collective consciousness. Which is yeah. a, which is not which is not a very a very data like thing. And that and that that was the factor that she was missing, which is which is why she which is why her um, conclusions ended up being faulty. All right, let me throw this out then. The data basically predicts the arrival of Dark XM and what it will do mm -hmm. when it's utilized. But she, but Ada interprets it as that is what it will take to bring humanity together is for them to to basically lose control of themselves. But Sarah, Makoto, and Jack show that it's actually by everyone working together and breaking free of that, much like they did in the original, mm -hmm. and they all work together to share pe the power of the XM, that's when they break through to her and reali and it realizes oh that's what it meant yeah and you you can ha you can have you can have the you can have the final you can have the final battle i in order to involve everybody i would actually have it that that um sarah brings brings the other two heroes into the substrate as yeah. as as nice looking as it as it is to ha as it is to have to have to have sarah getting getting um Getting blue and green wings, um, I f I feel I um I feel like this is that a climax and something like this should involve all three care all three protagonists that we've followed. Yeah, actually, let's let's throw it this way. 
because throughout this, neither of them have switched sides. Mm -hmm. Bakoto's still resistance. Jack is still enlightened. What if, with Makoto using his connections to unify everybody else, they share their power and channel it through Makoto and Jack? And maybe they actually become Sarah's wings, in a way. That, I'm, I'm per you're thinking, you're, I'm, I'm actually perfectly fine with that, and we, and we can use that to get away with, with, each, with each of them getting one wing. Yeah. Um. And... Because because of, because of that, now obvi obviously you know how you know how that confrontation ends, but it's it it doesn't end with her it doesn't end with Ada, um shutting down or being defeated just uh, just understanding, and yeah, through that through that you c you can have you can have you can have the end you can have the ending that we had originally, but instead instead of it being Sarah's bo Sarah's body, in that thing. Have it be an act, an actual, an actual Jane Doe whose name is Ada. And instead of it being like this last minute surprise, it be that as soon as they exit the substrate, Ada is like, it is clear that my mission is no longer, my my services are no longer needed. It is time for me to go and release this release this body back into the world, and thus they see Ada wake up. Mm -hmm. And. This is th through this kind of thing. You're recontextualizing um, the J the Jane Doe as as um, a, a kind of a kind of symbolic rebirth for Ada. Ooh, ooh! Last minute idea. Let's throw a big twist. If you want to have a big twist, let's mm -hmm. make it a big twist. All right. Have it be. Have it reveal that it's actually Ada Brandt. That I'm willing to go with. Let's throw the daughter twist in there. <laughs> yeah, I'd, I'd be will, I'd be willing to, I'd be willing to go to go with that, especially since um, it it does it does put a whole new context on ev on everything that um, Doctor Brandt had done up to that point. Yeah, and maybe you know, and we'll, and to make to make it so that Brandt's not evil, we don't want to go down that route. We'll mm -hmm. say that she volunteered for this. But it still causes Jack to kind of rethink a lot of things on that. Yeah, especially especially since the the idea of the idea of using some using somebody as a, as a as as a AI interface is is still close to the line. Even yeah, if, even if they volunteered. Um, I'd I'd imagine I'd imagine that um. That you you'd pro you could probably have the conversation where, where, a big concern of Jack is somebody trying to replicate um, Ada's technology. And uh, I am using this to kind of do the Doctor Serizawa thing from um, Gojira, mm. where it, where Ada de Ada decides that it may it may be best to um self destruct so that no so that no so that who long or somebody else doesn't try and copy this kind of thing. Yeah. Since a big a big thing that I want to emphasize with J with Jack is in in part or in part a reflection of of his of his job as a bodyguard and his his um precognitive abilities. He's all. He's always trying to. He's always trying to assess risks before they happen. And while while uh, and he's and um, while he does while he doesn't have anything against against this Ada, what it does con what does concern him is some, is somebody else trying to copy the tech. Yeah. Somebody who may not have as as noble of intentions as Doctor Brandt. And that, and that's what he that's what he relays to to Ada, who does who does see the does see the issue because it's a it's a very easy it's a very easy statement to make. Um, you you won't do it, but what but but what if, but what if what if uh, but you were but you were made un, you were made under the under the payroll of of Hulong. What if they, what if they decide to make make their own take on something like you? 
without a volunteer. And I, and, and, you, you know, and we could say that maybe Hulong had the data for a little while, but Ada was tied into it, and she deletes that data before self-destructing. Mm-hmm. And that one little last fuck you to Hulong. Yeah. Um, the reason I the reason I bring I bring up Dr. Sarazawa because if you if have you now just for just for context have you seen the original Gojira? N- not really. No. Sarazawa um created the created the means to created the means to ki- to kill the original Godzilla using a oxygen destroyer. But something but he was ve- but even though he had this device, he was very very concerned about that kind of about the technology to make that device falling into the wrong hands in the future. Um there is act- there's actually a bit of a subtext in the original Godzilla about the line between science and morality. And because because of that, he declares that he'll only use the device if he, if he's allowed to go down with it. Because he because the only person who knew how to make the thing was him. So if he's if he's dead, nobody else can try it. Yeah. Um. And I think and I'm ki- I'm kind of tapping in I'm kind of tapping into that with this Ada question because. If you really want to, if you really want to do a, a story that that's gonna that's in, going to involve asking qu- asking questions about transhumanity, you gotta you gotta go whole hog with that. Exactly. Otherwise, you're just gonna be Bioshock Infinite. Don't be Bioshock <laughs> Infinite. <laughs> you will never live that one. You will never let that one live down, will you? Nope. That it. <laughs> that one is in the Book of Grudges. Oh shit! Okay, I didn't think it was that bad, but okay. Um, okay, okay. It's it's only it's only it's only one passage in the book. I don't have a whole volume or a whole shelf or a, or a whole section dedicated to it like certain other people. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> but within within the, within this, and for whatever reason, when you for whatever reason, um. I I keep I keep imagining um I keep imagining that a- that Ada Brandt is as is as much of a redhead as her father is. Oh, absolutely! Come on, you gotta have that. Mm-hmm. Um, but and but with with all with all of that and with all of that in mind, we do with this kind of setup. It could be it could be argued that. The fact that we have eleven episodes of a chase is a, is a bit repetitive. I'd arg- I'd argue instead that it that what we'd be doing with this approach is a mixture between between chase and and hidden treasure. Because in each area yeah. they still have to they still have to find the me- they still have to find the media and figure out the right combination of glyphs. It's going to be, and because we're doing a world-spanning adventure kind of thing, it wouldn't feel that monotonous. I mean, come on, we we put up with it with JoJo just going to Egypt. I think we could put up with this. Yeah, and within within those various places, you can you can have a bit of a nod to to um to certain areas that fun that function as portals. Yeah, again, tying it back to the game, and maybe they even get involved in a fa- in a faction battle or two. Mm-hmm. It's and where the key- sorry. I want to throw in that we uh, have like maybe we'll have ones where one time Makoto actually helps the uh, enlightened, and maybe one time we'll have Jack help the resistance. You know, yeah. realizing that they need to do that to keep things uh, stable. Yeah. Um. One of the one of the key things in the one of the key things that happened in the series was that they were only able to access their abilities when it when in a field. I think we need to. I think that's something we need to kill off. Yeah. Sim- simply, simply because of the simply because of the fact that it um it takes it it takes a degree of autonomy away away from them. Um, especially since the the main the main the main purpose with field is just is just um sco- is scoring within the game. I mean, because it. The servers, the servers will track, will track what fi- what fields are where every five hours, and use that to determine scoring for who's going to be top for who's top agents in an area. If anything, I would say the fields 
will act as maybe like if you own a if you hold control over a particular field, you get a little bit of boost. Yeah, that I'm that I'm more willing to go with. Rather rather than being completely cut off from from the powers, yeah. the, especially especially now because of the fact that everybody has potential access to to the to the scanner tech that's used in the thing. Um, fields are get fields are going to be constantly shifting. And that's not going. That's not going to be. That's going to result in a lot of narrative convenience. And that's. And it's just. It's just not going. It's just not going to work when when a field is able to be consistent just for the purposes of the plot. Yeah. Um. Now, if you now, as as you want to have the whole the whole idea of t of taking of taking a field away so that somebody doesn't have an advantage. Yeah, I'm, per I'm perfectly fine with I'm perfectly fine with that. That would be an easy thing to do early on. And actually, that would work really well with the idea of of Hulong being able to shift factions at a moment's notice. Mm -hmm. Maybe they have it. Maybe all the uh, Hulong has you, is on one side and thus has the advantage because they're that field is the one in uh, power. And then throughout the throughout the episode, maybe maybe let's let, let me let me throw a scenario out for you. All right. Well, Hulong's agent, like let's say in this particular scenario, the Hulong agents are on the resistance side, mm -hmm. which is the field that's currently in control right now. And that because of that, and and uh, Jack has to fight him off, but obviously he's enlightened, so he would be in trouble. Mm -hmm. But behind the scenes, or actually no, it would probably it would be Bakoto. Yeah, uh, this is tricky because you have to because. You have to find a way, or actually, no. Makoto, though he can't switch factions because he wouldn't obviously have that ability, or unless you want to throw in a plot point where they actually do learn to learn and gain access to that tech, that actually might serve a good purpose given the whole bringing them together kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So maybe have one of them go off and help the faction take control of the field, so that the Hulong agents no longer have the advantage. Yeah. I'd I would I would say I would say that get that giving the giving the heroes the ability to the ability to switch midway midway through the story is a nice way of a nice way of canceling out that particular um, disadvantage. Though we should have to make that work, we would have to throw in a limit that they can only switch factions once per day or something like that. I'd e I'd either go with with that or or the or the fact that um if they do that. If they do it too much, it'll be a lot easier to to track them. Yeah, well, I I think we need to have a limit for the for the Hulong side as well, because if let's if if we were to do to go with that scenario of uh, one of them sneaking off to help to control the field, what would stop the Hulong agents from just switching back? Yeah, I th I think I think uh, I think the once per day thing is is a is a good touch, especially since. Because of how connected this game is, if if it was noted that people were that people were switching sides, there would be an uproar. Yeah. Oh. Um, and that and then of of course the of course the general public would want that would want that same effect, and then everything goes chaos. Exactly. So, because of, because of that, I'd. S the the key th the key thing is with a, with a lot of these is while while it is while if you look at if you look at what they're actually doing you could see a bit of repetitiveness it, it what makes it not so is the context that we're putting things in each thing you have it's a, it's a classic is a classic setup with a mystery each clue is is a key component into the next clue I mean, for for fuck's sake, that was that was the that was the rare, that was the rare thing that Operation Overdrive got kind of right. <laughs> yeah, I know. Shocker. <laughs> yep, I realize that's I realize that sounds like praising with faint dams, but still. <laughs> <laughs> We're uh, that show fucking hell. 
That being said, but yeah, that that was the one thing they did actually make a decent attempt at doing was yeah, like they would find one clue and it would lead to the next clue and it would, which would lead to the next clue, mm -hmm. and eventually it would lead to a big uh, the big prize at the end, and that's kind of something we're kind of setting up here. Yeah, when you're do when you're doing a story. That's also the reason why I haven't focused too much on ca on characterization when it ca aside f aside from the basics with each person here, largely because of the fact that there just frankly isn't enough time. We we could e we could either do a f we could either do a more focused area just on Tokyo and have and allow for more character exploration, or we could focus more on more on the mystery. And between the two of them, the latter is the more appealing option. It's kind of what I, th you know, going back to that JoJo event, that thing I mentioned earlier with Stardust Crusaders, that series had very little character development. Most of the cast did not develop at all, mm -hmm. but you forgave it because the story was progressing, them making their travels, though even I'll admit they kind of dragged a little bit there. But once it started picking up steam, that became the focus of getting to Dio and kicking his ass. Yeah. That's kind of what we're doing here. Is like we don't have the time to do a full character development because we need to make sure that you know we we get those tiny little bits of them like learning to accept each other's uh, the different ideals of the factions and kind of coming together and realizing that really they don't they aren't all that different from each other. It's just they have some different. They're they're reaching the same goal, just taking different roads to get there. Yeah, and thus. They all that's when they start working at it. But aside from that, you don't need to really deep dive their characters. Especially since, as we've established, Makoto's growth has already happened. We can avoid we can get a rat we can leave that behind. We don't need to worry about that. Mm -hmm. Um The reason why the reason why I specifically point this kind of thing out is because among among a, among a lot of people who can cons who consume all ma all manner of storytelling there seems to be this idea that you can, that you ha that um if a if a character does not have a development arc then they're not a very well written character there seems this mm -hmm. idea that you, that you cannot do things well with a with a with a flat character arc or that a flat character arc is boring when yeah no, I as after with as many AMA as I've seen, I've kind of come to learn that yeah, that doesn't happen. You can have a character who doesn't develop much if they're already well developed to begin with, you know, and you, you focus and have them be like a pillar to hold up to hold up the others. Oh, um, that's pretty. That's pretty much how protagonists work in in every in every um pulp serial. That I that I've that I've seen over over the over the decades, um, that's that's the reason why when I um when I t when I talked about Goblin Slayer on RV Talks, I had made I had made a lot of comparisons to pul to pulp heroes because that's what the Slayer is in that story. Yeah, he's already established himself as the Goblin Slayer. He doesn't need to be anything else. He doesn't need to grow beyond that. He knows what he is. Mm -hmm. He knows what he wants. Um, another good another good example of this kind of thing is um, is Carl is Carl Urban's take on Judge Dredd. Where the the Dredd himself is is unchanging, but the real development in that whole thing is Anderson. Hmm. I mean, they they tried they tried to do a development character arc in uh, in the Salone version, but the problem is Dread isn't that kind of character, so it didn't work. No, just uh, made it. Lo it just looks stupid. Uh, uh, among uh, among other things, least least of least of which being the least of which being the whole um, the whole dr the whole Dread taking his helmet off, which if you which I'm not sure how much of the comics you're familiar with, he never takes his helmet off, ever. And any t any time that he is shown with his helmet off, you never see his face. It's an it's yeah. it's been an iron it's been an ironclad rule for thirty years. Because it's not the point. Mm -hmm. You don't need to know the human on the underneath because you already see him. That is what the mat the helmet is him, because yeah. he is so ingrained in that ideal of being the law of the land. Mm -hmm. 
now with with that kind of thing in mind, even a big a big reason why why this is why this has been a trickier reconstruction to work with than others is the combination of way too much plot and not and way too little time. I'd imagine that we yeah. probably we probably would have been able to cover a cover thing cover things like the the collaborators or the or the upper echelon of Hulong and similar conspiracies if we were dealing with say 26 episodes but that's not the case we only ha we um, and gr granted we didn't have a whole lot of episodes to work with in the core reconstruction but we had but earth ha but um air had like 13 or so episodes that's about, yeah, that's a that's that's a that's a half season's worth for and for any um anime. And there's been plenty of, there's been plenty of anime over the years who've managed to do a complete story in 13 episodes. But it, ele but 11 that do, that does put a bit of a constraint on what we can do. And there's a, there's also there's also the there's also the fact that um when you're do when when you're do when you're doing that few when you're doing that few episodes you 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 need to, you need to have a constant degree of movement because again you don't have you don't have time you don't have time to really dawdle you can have your you can have your more calm moments but you have to have you have to have gained you have to have gained something at the end of each episode even if it is just the next clue. Yeah. Um, now, s since you did have issues with um, with te with Tessellate as an opening theme, I'm cu I'm curious, what can what can I'm not not in terms of a particular artist, but what kind of music should would have been more fitting for an opening theme for this kind of anime? That's the tricky part, but with what we're doing now. I'd suspect somewhere between a techno rock kind of sound would probably have fit better, given the whole futuristic feel of everything. Actually, I, th I think I, I think I know since they wanted to do a whole lot of alt rock, I think I think I know who to who would have made an ideal um, opening theme. Hmm. Are you familiar with a noise rock band called Health? No. Um. One of their big claims, there's two big claims to fame that they have. One is providing several several tracks for Cyberpunk 2077, but the other one is that they provided the soundtrack for Max Payne 3. Hmm. Um, a lot of a lot of their a lot of their stuff is th is this mix is this mix between um, this mix between hard rock and synthwave. And because of that, I do th I do think that they would they would be an ideal pick. Um, it also doesn't hurt that they did an entire album that was cyberpunk themed. Which Ingress isn't technically cyberpunk, but there but there is leaning in the in the speculative tech end of things. As far as In Cold Blood being the ending, I'm perfectly willing to keep that. But now pr I'll probably I'll probably s I'll probably send you a link to one to one of Health's tracks just so you can get a just so you can get a feel for how they um, work. But I'll do I'll do that a I'll do that afterwards. But beyond, because I keep th I keep thinking something synth something synthwave, but a but the problem is um synthwave itself is a little bit too passive. Yeah, but a no but something like health would fit a lot more appropriately. Um, and I'm I may I'm. I may be a bit I may be a bit biased because I spent I spend way too much time fi figuring out figuring out soundtracking for various works as as you as you saw when I gave everybody a th when I gave everybody a theme track during during some of the um, RVT at the table episodes. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I I will I will note that I 
I did have a bit of a markout moment hearing Alt, hearing Alt J in an opening. The same way I had a, I had a bit of a markout moment hearing Girls on Film when I first saw Speed Graffer, simply because <laughs> it's not, it's not something you expect to hear. Yeah. Um, I suppose another example of this kind of thing would be hearing Paranoid Android when I was watching um Ergo Proxy for the first time. Is who ex who expects to hear Radiohead when they're li when they're watching an anime? And I'm f <laughs> But <sighs> with but with that said, I think I think that wraps I think that wraps up the this particular reconstruction on ingress we'll be we'll be back with it we'll be back with another um another bit of in, another bit of insanity and of course um i've i've got i've got a i've got a fair few a fair few interviews with people fam familiar and less and less familiar um throughout throughout the week include up to and including this um, Saturday, I'll be doing another big dice panel, f themed on, themed on superhero role playing. And the next, I will note that the next review that I have planned is going is bringing me back to the land of the weeb, because I'm going to be covering anime five e. But with all, with all that said. I would once again like to sincerely thank everyone who took the time out of their schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness. And there'll be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here, on the open bar of the internet. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, and join the watch.